Good morning, everybody. It's Gil here from the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. And Deb and I really hope you enjoyed last week's video that we did about forming a state of residency. It was really um, interesting for us. It was a good learning experience over a couple of month period. And we just wanted to share with you what we found. If you're going to be a full-time RV or a full-time sailor and you sell your home, it is an interesting thing to consider that, you know, from from the world's perspective, you are homeless. You no longer have a permanent address and it's something you have to consider. So I will put a link right up here for that video. Hope you guys enjoy it. Today we're in the storage shed and we're starting to clean up. Deb actually got a big head start on this while I was out of town this week. The fact that I'm standing, geez, right on the center line of this, I'm halfway back. That wasn't possible when I left town this week, so she's made some good progress for sure. Let me just show you though, this is the kind of stuff that kills me. And if you're wanting to move on to a boat or you want to move on to an RV, you want to downsize, man, don't do this. Like, we're so bad about this. We have extra something. We put it in a bag or a box. We carry it around in the car for a while, thinking we're going to bring it to Goodwill or even throw some stuff away. And we don't. We need that space in the car for something. We come out of the storage shed, we drop it off, and what we end up with are bins full of crap. Here's an example. Here's a bin. It's got a couple of old, nasty stuffed animals that no one uses anymore. You know, an old, an old visor. Like I don't see anybody using that. Uh, an old folder for homework two years ago. A coloring book that's all bent up and messed up. It's just it's crazy, crazy stuff. So we're filling trash bags and also bins to take over to Goodwill. Deb's been making good progress. Right across the way there is the unit she put all the stuff in when her parents passed away. It's been enough time. It's time to start cleaning some of that out. So she's making progress. Oh, and I put the batteries from the boat in there, which we need to replace. I'm cleaning out my parents' storage unit. As it turns out, there's about four boxes in here that there's. The rest of it's all our freaking junk. Is it really? And Spencer's junk. All right, buddy, son, we love you. It's time to get rid of your stuff. This is a box of GI Joes. Wonder what I can get for them on eBay. <laughs> and while this side of the storage unit is starting to look somewhat organized, with our stuff going over to Goodwill and the things on the shelves starting to get a little bit organized into boat parts and whatnot, this part, well, not so much. Some material I bought that I was going to put up on the ceiling of the boat. Some foam we were going to use for some cushions. There's a cooler that fell. The embroidery machine box. Christmas decorations. Closed cell foam insulation to go behind the facade wall. Old license plates. That's logical. It's just crazy. Old sails. All right, that's one trip to the dumpster down. The back of the truck done. I emptied all these bins that I had. It's just using to put stuff in to carry over to the dumpster. And I'm about to go get another load, which would make this the third one. Deb took one earlier. So we're making pretty good progress. Uh, it's amazing just how much crap and how sloppy we were putting stuff in there. It's disappointing, actually. Consumerism. It's taken us over a little bit. And for nothing. Like, we're going through this stuff, and there's zero emotional ties to the things we're throwing away, which tells me they weren't all that important in the first place. Sad. Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> Today, we are going to do a little bit more work on the boat that was sort of left undone. 
when we reskinned the coach house with fiberglass, there was one section that I removed a small piece of rotted um, wood, and I never did replace it. Um, when I when I put those uh, new glass ports all in the coach house, there was a section of one of the windows that was really thin, didn't have a good backing, and unfortunately that started leaking. I knew I would have to fix it uh, with a more permanent repair. Uh, so today I'm going to work on cutting the template for that. I'm also going to do a little bit of work of fairing some internal surfaces where we intend to um, where we intend to paint the the inside of the boat white. Um, a little bit of hazing or cracks in the surface, and I'm going to try an interesting an interesting method of doing this. Um, some of you have left comments in, in other videos about this particular product and, and method, so I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, I also saw an old salty uh, wooden boat guy that used to live by me in the marina. Um, really nice guy, kind of knew his stuff, right? One of those guys you go to to ask any question in the world. And this is something that he had done. I remember when he first told me, and I thought, well, that sounds a little odd, right? But but I really it sort of heard it from several other people. So we're going to give it a shot and see, and I'll show you how we're doing that. So, I'll tell you what, uh, let me pay attention to the road since I just left the storage unit picking up a few supplies. Uh, they should be right here behind me. And I will see you guys down on the boat. Well, folks, we just made it over to the boat. And as I mentioned, when we were in the car, the idea is to... Let me first get here and close everything up. All right, so now that I'm on board, let me um, show you over here in this bulkhead area where I want to, uh, coach house wall area, where I want to go ahead and do that repair. I wish it didn't look like it was going to ring because the best repair, I think, would be taking that glass out, epoxying the wood in place, and using the opening to clamp it. I'll show you what I mean on it, but I really don't want a gaping hole in the side of the boat today while I do that. Uh, I may still. We'll see. A lot of times it's difficult to see this just because of the amount of light that's coming in, but let me show you over in the edge of this coach house here area where I have my challenge. So I'm going to see if I can get see if I can get the camera to adjust better in so this. Here's the bottom of that um, that glass port I was talking about. And you can see I didn't even trim the, the sealant here because I knew I'd be doing this repair. But if you look right here, I'm going to look kind of inward downward and, and you can see there's this right here is half inch thick teak planks and they run horizontally on the outside of the boat. That's ultimately what we smoothed up and skinned over. Inside should have been another hunk of bulkhead, a three quarter inch piece of uh, marine grade plywood. If you look right here, you can see where it was. So somebody had cut this out at some point before we bought the boat. I, mean, I, I just got a drip on my hands so you can see where it's dripping. But so I need to cut a piece that's going to fit this whole area here all the way up and over the top of the port. I'll have to take this uh, curtain shelf out here so we can get to it. But you can also see that it tucks. See if you can see this. So it tucks right inside here along this wall and it was cut right inside this bulkhead area so we can put the seam behind that and fill it with epoxy and make it structurally sound. So my goal is going to be to essentially cut a piece that's going to go right on here and epoxy it. And this is what I was saying, if this glass wasn't here, it'd be real easy to put the wood right up along here and use a clamp from the outside to the inside and clamp it. I think what I may end up doing is a little bit of a cheat. I may use backward clamps and go off of this uh, shelf here and use that to apply pressure up against the outside of this wall. The good news is it's going to fit nice and tight inside of this groove behind the edge of the bulkhead. Um, so I don't have to worry as much about that side as I do this side. So I think we've got a couple of options. Let me get this measured up. Well, first things first, I need to remove that curtain and um, small wooden trim that hides the curtain behind it just so that I have full access to the area to be repaired. This isn't going to be as simple as just putting a piece of wood up there. There's moisture up above the port, which tells me water doesn't typically come in and go up. Um, so it's coming in from somewhere above it. The problem is there's not much above it. Uh, you know, it's, it's three inches of, of wood, uh, solid old core or whatever it was, uh, three quarter inch marine grade ply. And then there's a small horizontal piece of wood that, that is, that runs the length of the boat. It's essentially, one of the things that the roof actually sits down onto. 
so yeah I'm a little worried about this I don't see a spot out there where it could have been coming in I did have the boatyard do a repair there the there was a gap between the coach house roof and the wall and when we skinned up with fiberglass and went up the curve there was a small gap there and initially they filled it uh, and we thought we would be able to just do that and it would it would hold fine well they ended up using a a sealant and when I asked and by the way after a few months in the yard it, it opened up a little bit so I asked the yard owner Michael and he said yeah let me let me take a look at that I'll talk to the guys what we can probably do right there's two ways to do it we can reglass the whole thing a lot of labor right to do all that uh, fine detail work of laying the glass from the top around the edge and into that curve he said we may also be able to just use 5200 which is a uh, you know it, it, it's a it forms solid uh, and it can be used under the water line and it is a, a an adhesive I'm using the wrong term it's an adhesive material so it, it sticks uh, and you know for anyone that's ever used it it's pretty darn permanent it's a pain in the neck to get out so we used that we filled the gap with that and my only thought is I wonder if somehow water got is getting in that gap um, and, and what I'm seeing is it running down that's the only sort of logical thing above where I'm seeing this moisture I don't know. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my oscillating saw and I'm going to cut this where I thought was good, um, good solid core bulkhead inside, inside the three quarter inch marine grade. I'm going to cut that down further to see if I can remove another small piece of it and see if by removing that I can expose where it seems to be you know, the wettest. Right. I'm doing a little bit of Sherlock Holmes follow the moisture thing. Um, it definitely seems to be isolated to just about a one foot, maybe 12 inches or 18 inch wide area. Um, it seems to be isolated to just that. It's not forward of that port and it's not aft of the bulkhead because uh, it's dry in both of those areas. So it's definitely coming, it's isolated as one location, which frankly is good. At least I'm not chasing something that's 10 feet away and running down. <sighs> And it looks like it's going to rain, and then it kind of gets sunny, and it looks like it's going to rain. So I don't know if I want to cut the port out, which would be the other easy way to expose what's going on in there. Um, so I'm going to try first cutting the wood out from inside the port. <laughs> Hopefully I don't crack the glass. That'll, that'll tick me off. You know what? I've been sitting here for five minutes just sipping my coffee and thinking about this, and I, I'm not 100% sure of the direction I want to go. So... I just decided I'm going to grab the sander, I'm going to sand a little bit of cabinetry I still need to do down in the lower salon, uh, let my mind wander for a few minutes while I do that, and then I'll come back and contemplate again what I'm going to do with that damn leaking area over here. Um, a leaking area is a problem though, I mean, I, we don't want to chase drips in this boat, and we were down to like just a couple. That's one of them, and it's bigger than now I thought it was. I really thought it was just the fact that I didn't have a... I didn't have a good bedding for the glass to sit on and it was just leaking around my sealant because I didn't have that inner area for it to rest on, but not so much. Um, yeah, I'm going to sand a little bit, take my mind off it for a bit. <laughs> so let me show you where I'm going to do this little bit of fairing here. Um, so I'm in the head, forget the little echo here, and you can see I sanded this wall a little bit. This had the horizontal teak um, alternating stripes on it, but we really want to try to do this where we paint this white and lighten up some of the inside of the boat while not losing the beautiful wooden look that it has. And we're going to do the same thing right over here. We took off the teak strips, and if you look really close, it's hard to see it in the in the camera. There's little tiny crazed areas um, that just need to be fair a little bit. And this one Deb painted just to test it out to see what it would look like. You know, this one little section just inside where all of the cabinetry is in the salon. But when I was cleaning that up and getting ready to ferret, I ran into this. <laughs> now we knew that the deck had a problem up here at one point, and the previous owner had done work on it. Uh, I noticed a couple of these little teak strips were loose, so I pulled them off of there, and as I did, um, what I found was this repair. You can see there's, there's not even epoxy or polyester resin in there. This thing is just a piece of wood screwed in, which just like I found on the back bulkhead is probably there more so so that there was something to attach these strips to and make it look nice, hide the problem. You know, I don't think it was malicious. It might have just been complete, being completely overwhelmed with the work. But heck, even here, this this is the old fiberglass tab. It's not even epoxied to it. It's just sitting between it. So I'm going to have to do some work on here. I may just squirt thickened epoxy behind it and attach all this thing together here. I'm not sure. Um, 
but I, I, you know, I also saw down here where this, you know, the, the rot was actually below the cabinetry. And if I were to come inside the cabinet and look up, you know, it's hard to see it, but you could see light through there. So I've got to do a little bit, a little bit of work on here. The good news is whether this was termite damage that was repaired or if this was an old leak and, and rot, um, it's all dry. Everything in here is dry. I did clean up some of the dry rot that was in there, but it's not rotting any longer. And now it's just a matter of sealing it all up and making it look good. Because we've been talking about painting this insect, this intersection white right up to where this little decorative teak rail is, I may just, um, heck, I might just fare that whole thing smooth and then paint it. But we'll see. I mentioned earlier about a, a process that somebody shared with me in the comments down below and one of my boat neighbors, Keith, shared with me. So I want to show you this. It, it's actually using Bondo auto, auto Body Filler. Sounds odd, but it's essentially a fiberglass resin based uh, fairing material that sands really lightly. Um, and it you know, goes on automotives, it can handle vibrations, all those kinds of things. The thing is, it's really nice and easy to use. You basically scoop some of this stuff out, mix a little hardener in it, mix it till it's the right consistency, and fare with it. So let me uh, show you what that looks like. <laughs> I actually use these old pieces of insulated material that we put up in the windows in the, in the real hot heat of the summer as a way to cover the table, because my wife will kill me if I get fiberglass and Bondo on the table. But I have just here a, a piece of small, thin material to use as my, uh, my mixing board. And this is it. It's just um, Bondo uh, body filler. I got a small container of it. Uh, it comes uh, in the container itself with a little bit of the hardener. So let me mix some of this stuff up. And um, I got my gloves and my small fairing spatula. And we'll get moving. Here's the before, here's the before, here's inside the head, and again, I've not sanded this yet, this is just the fairing compound on there, I'm using Bondo Auto Filler this time, and then you can see what it looks like over here, so again, put the filler on and we'll sand it here in about 30 minutes. Deb just called as I was putting the fairing compound on, and she and Whitney and McKinley are all on their way over to help out. So that's going to be kind of cool. Maybe they can get some sanding done while I start working on the uh, part of the port. I, I, I figured I'd kill a little time and let myself start to think about it. I think I am going to cut that piece of wood out and see what's behind it. Uh, see if we can't come up with a good plan for a resolution here. Are you comfy, buddy? You want to get back in that opening over there, don't you? Bet you do.